Your ears do not deceive you. You have just entered the Cryptid Creator Corner brought to you by your friends at Comic Book Yeti. So without further ado, let's get on to the interview. Skirt of Gamut sound like something spoken by a Cthulhu cultist or the name of a weird craft beer brand, but it's actually the shorthand for this new wild crowdfunding comics project, Super Kaiju Rock and Roll Derby Funtime Go from creator David Hedgecock. This is a mashup of Jim and the Holograms meets Roller Derby with Kaiju with a twist of 70s pop culture thrown in. Harmony, Lyra, Melody, Cadence, and Viola are a struggling 20-something band and a roller derby team flush with talent but broke as a joke. The burnouts are thrilling concert goers with their killer looks and vibe until a music mishap drops a curious ancient artifact into their hands. Cheeky, lighthearted, and fun. It will be launching soon, and there's an early bird special if you catch it in time that scores you a discount and a VIP wristband. I'll drop the link in the show notes. I read the advance for this, and honestly, it reminds me of my own carefree days gigging on the road in the music industry, but with way better shower scenes. The only thing missing is more cowbell. Hello, and welcome to Comic Book Yeti's Cryptid Creator Corner Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jimmy Gasparro, and um, I have returning guests, although one of them I haven't had a chance to interview, though I was I was lucky enough to meet them in person. Um, but uh, we have from a wave blue world, Tyler Chin Tanner. Tyler, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. And also, uh, uh, Jared Lujan. Jared's been on the podcast before uh, on one of Byron's episodes, and but this is the first time that I get to interview Jared, and I'm super excited because I'm like a Jared Lujan super fan. Uh, I first I first started reading Jared's comics with Dry Foot, and I haven't stopped since. I have. Uh, I think uh, all the ones that he's had on Kickstarter, I just recently, last weekend or the weekend before, read Southbound. Um, you know, uh, you might have hear, heard me talk about uh, on the podcast, All the Devils Are Here or uh, Blood and Obsidian. So, um, yeah, we're, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to talk to Jared because uh, Tyler was here before with Val Rodriguez talking about uh, Mezzo. Uh, when volume two had come out. So now there is a brand new after volumes one and two, there is a brand new issue. Number one, the start of the arc for volume three of Mezzo, the trial of Rodin and Jared is involved with that project. And I'm just so excited to talk about it because I absolutely love this comic. I just reread volumes one and two again, before we started recording tonight and just like, I just flew through them. I was so excited. The artwork is so dynamic. The storytelling is so incredible. And now Jared's involved in this, so I- I'm I'm over the moon uh, and cannot wait for my copy of Mezzo Trial of Rodin Number One, which is going to be out May first, twenty twenty four. But I I I um I'm I'm just way too excited. We got to get in and talk to them. So Tyler and Jared, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. That was so nice. Thank you. Um, I'm I I really uh, I got so lucky with like Dry Foot, right? Because uh, the people like a dry foot came out like the worst possible time for comics to come out. But the people that got into dry foot are, have been like to this day, like die hard, like, like loyal. And it's so cool. And I'm so, I'm so psyched. I'm very, very happy. So thank you. Yeah. I, I think like, you know, being on a Twitter and in like indie comic circles. And um, I think it was right around the same time with dry foot. And I saw, you know, that post, you had a post about I'm bringing I'm going to I'm going to give you Mexicans with swords. <laughs> and I was like, I think I think I want that. Yeah. Let's see what this is about. And um, yeah, I, I haven't looked back. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Never look back. Only forward. You know, <laughs> um, yeah. But for any of our listeners who aren't familiar, so Mezzo is kind of um, a Mesoamerican influence story but it's it's a fantasy world it's not really historical or there 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 are some kind of i guess historical roots to it heavily influenced by i believe mayan and uh aztec mythology but it's kind of like its own fantasy world uh i'll just give a real quick recap but tyler you know please you can correct anything i get wrong but volume one is um it, it, there was an event called the rupture which has kind of separated some of the tribes of this land. And now one in particular are trying to like take over. And we're quickly kind of introduced to the main players in volume one. 
um, in terms of these kind of competing tribes. Um, volume two kind of culminates in more of, uh, we learn more about our main characters. Uh, there's a, a, a big battle scene. The, more of this world uh, is fleshed out. And um, I mean, it, it, we now it sets it's ish, volume two sets the stage for volume three. One of the main characters in it from, I guess, the the conquering tribe, Rodin, uh, kind of he- sees an old friend and his buddy companion, Fagor, who is like, like a, a giant of a man with a big, huge sword and uh, kind of sees him show mercy to an old friend of his from a, another faction. And uh, it, this kind of sets up the trial of Rodin for, for volume three. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm doing a, a poor job of just like describing the dynamic action in this. I mean, Val Rodriguez's artwork, I think most of it is colored at least volume two by Gabe Contreras, which I, I'm a big fan of Gabe's work. Um, but yeah, it is just, it's, it's such a, a, just a jaw dropping dynamic action pack series. And I, I, I just, I love all of these characters. I, I love how they've all kind of come together in volume two. I cannot wait to see uh, where volume three goes. Yeah. Um, but Tyler, can you just tell our listeners a little bit about in terms of, you know, I know you talked about it before when Val was on, but for anyone who didn't catch that, you know, episode, just talk a little bit about kind of your inspiration with, you know, volume one and volume two of the story. And then, you know, get us into volume three and bringing Jared in. Yeah. Uh, so like you said, it's a fantasy epic. Um, there's a lot of similarities to something like Game of Thrones or, or things like that you're familiar with. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted it to be different. I didn't want to just repeat the same sort of character designs and, and species. Um, so I was looking in, you know, for uh, a different way to do it. And um, the Mesoamerican thing was actually suggested by the, the first artist and he wanted to, uh, who did most of the character designs, Josh Singerman. Um, he, he said, well, we should tap into the, this Mesoamerican history. You know, I forgot exactly how we put it, but he's like, I, I would love to draw those sort of things. So he started drawing and I started researching and got myself some books i can pull some off my shelf over here reading all about it and i just thought that this was so ripe for a fantasy tale with um everything about their sense of astrology and the sun and the eclipse was a big theme but also the migrations of people um one of the things i draw on is there was an occurrence of a of a volcanic eruption which caused a huge migration and actually one of the first big cities um that was built in the Mayan um, culture was because of that, of coming together of natural disasters. Um, And it was just like the beginning of it was just very sort of free form characters coming in. Fagor is blind only because Josh drew him with that helmet on it, um, which spawns this thing, you know, right here. Um, And I was just like, why, why can't he see, or why is this helmet drawn like that? And he's like, I don't know. I just drew it like that. I'm like, well, he's blind. He was blinded by me. <laughs> <laughs> that story started. And, and uh, I started off volume one just with fighting. I'm like, let's just, you know, an invasion. You know, and it begins with an invasion and we'll go from there, find out more about these characters and <clears throat> we'll get into the flashback of what happened back in the rupture that set everything. But I didn't want to just do a big info dump first. So I'm like, well, let's start right in the action of present day and figure out how we got here and the history and how that influences what they're doing now because they're all trying to prevent this disaster from happening again in this new eclipse and everybody has their own theories about you know was it their god angry at them was it this and that you know and and that's some of the things that come in play so you know politics religion culture migration all of that just thrown in together in this big pot um until I drove myself crazy and it was like, I need Jared to come on here and <laughs> guide me, guide me home. <laughs> so, well, that, I mean, that's a, 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 you know, a, a great jumping on point for Jared. So Jared, were you f- familiar with the series before getting involved in it? Or did you have to play catch up to see what you were kind of getting yourself into? 
<laughs> so um, my I had an LCS um, that I, at some point not my not my one I had one that just closed down, but the one before that um, I had they had suggested that I read Mezzo. And so um, I, I got, I, I'm pretty sure I have an issue of it around in my house somewhere. Um, I haven't, I have, do not have the kind of time to commit to that search right now, uh, but I really <laughs> want to find it <laughs> because I think that'd be a really cool thing. But uh, so I had heard about it. And I was familiar about it. Um, and then Tyler had emailed me uh, asking if I was interested. And I was like, well, like I, I, it seems like stuff that I'm interested in, but I want to read it before I say anything. Cause if, if I, I can't get into it, then I don't, I, I'm not, I'm only going to bring it down. Um, and then I got super into it. <laughs> uh, I got, I got freakishly into Mezzo. So, um, I was really psyched with how everything kind of unfolded in terms of, of going from, you know, where I was, uh, and, and kind of coming into seeing, sort of the, 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 the how everything's kind of clicking around with where it's going in the next volume. And I thought it was really cool for that. This is the first time that I've worked on a book um, that, that like really didn't start with me. It's the first time that uh, I've come into a book with like a multiple issues in the back or back issues already. So um, I, I read, I, and it was the first time that I came into something really as like a fan of the work and then trying to figure out what I wanted and what, what, what are what places of that of the, the story that I thought I could make better and and and, and elevate um, with and, and maybe not better I don't know if that's the right term but I like to elevate it right like we all we all that's that's the whole goal right is is elevating this book um, and and this world because of all these great characters that that w- w- all of us I'm sure at this point are are very invested in like all of us want to see what is happening uh to 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 and where everybody's going from it and so yeah it was very interesting coming on i, I and i really wish that i had been a fan of mezzo longer um i really wish that i got the single issues uh just because i think there's like a, so many people that could could totally get into this this is such a an easily accessible story and uh, what it brings to people is so easy for you to get hooked on that you can read those two volumes really quick, and then you're easy, you're kind of almost jonesing. And so, uh, I, I'm I'm also excited that I get to be like an active proponent in telling people to read it <laughs> and give it a chance and things like that because uh, it's it's very good and things that you like are the easiest thing to sell. Um, so it's it's been really cool talking to people with with coming into this where i'm like like do i do i need to buy the previous two issues trade volumes and i'm like yeah you should <laughs> you should like i it's it's they're good like i it's don't don't get it just because you think that it's now going to start being good it's been good you know like it could give it a give it an honest chance and and i think you dig it yeah i mean one of the things that i love about it is that i i think it's you know there's two volumes out so far like i said it's five issues each volume uh, I think the first volume sets the stage very well as the character introduction with a lot of action. Um, the second volume, though, with the flashbacks, it's never exposition heavy. And it's always just enough to kind of get more into the character motivations as everything starts to come, you know, to come together. You know, when, when we see, um, how do you pronounce the, I guess, the leader of uh the the Zala cool is it V or V U H? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, v. Uh, I mean as you see like more about him early on as you get into that second volume and there's it's it's never like hitting you over the head with backstory but you really get just enough especially in the visual visuals to get more about why these characters are the you know the way that they are and where it all all builds towards and the the battle scene in volume two is incredible i mean it is just uh, some of the best writing and best work in terms of you know especially val's work in volume two i mean it is incredible um all those parts coming together and it's it's un it's unreal how fast it goes and yeah i i got done like right you know like 20 minutes or 25 minutes before we were going to start recording and i was just like all right ready to go like 
just just ready to ex- excited to talk about it. More people. I want I want more people to read it. I want more people to talk about it. It is so good, and I cannot wait to see this volume three. Um, you know, but Jared talking about coming onto it and wanting to kind of elevate it and do you know kind of leave your your mark on it. Um, you know, you've you know, with things like the twin blades and blood and obsidian, or at least more so the, the twin blades, you have some of those, I, uh, you know, familiar elements in terms of the fighting, but there's still a part of that that is, you know, a, a, a like a modern story and kind of like the, 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 the past kind of intruding on the modern world with, uh, your, your brother and sister main characters in that. Um, so was there, any research you had to do aside from reading Mezzo to kind of get into the, I guess the, 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 even though it's a fantasy world, like the mythology of it, or is that something you felt comfortable with? I, I felt comfortable with it, but I'm always like, uh, I, 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 I really like to take influence from and, and see what other genre, like what, what fan I haven't written something fantasy like you're talking about, right? Especially with something as complex as uh, as what Mezzo was doing with its interconnected storylines and its flashbacks. So um, I, I did like research in terms that I, I read other things that felt like fantasy and started kind of like playing with the ideas that I had. Um, and then if the, to bring in new new and, and inventive things that we could do down the line or whatever. And then the other part of it was really fleshing out um, where, where do we want these characters to end up? Uh, because that was kind of like, we know what, we know what the story engine is. We know there's a trial. We know it's a railroad and we know what it's about. So, where does it go and how does that conclude and where do we spread, branch out from there? Because that's what I got. That's what I'm most interested in is how do these events like permanently alter the people that are in this story? And uh, I didn't like, I've had plenty of ideas that we were, that I was like, no, not that, not that. And, but as I've kept like kind of thinking about it um, and Tyler and I have gone back and forth on it. Uh, I really think that, that it's going to be, it's just exciting. I'm just so excited to, to see what everybody thinks and how people react to where everybody ends up going. Because, you know, I've, I've mentioned this in a couple of other places, Tyler and I have had different storytelling styles. And I think that we're, we're really coming up with something that complements them both very well. And uh, I'm pretty psyched. I, I am, I am excited about this volume of Mezzo. I'm excited for the future of Mezzo. Like, I, I just really think that, that, coming into it like the, i had so so much background because the mesoamerican stuff is my personal culture it's my it's from my own history and so coming into it with that background felt good i really was just looking at other fantasy things so that i could alter those is is really what where i think was my my short answer <laughs> like, okay. like take take something how can we flip it on its head how can we give it this different twist this different edge in this world that tyler's created Okay, so be like playing with the tropes of the fantasy genre to see how you could kind of leave your mark on it. Yeah, like everybody, like like one of the most the distinct differences that I really liked about Mezzo on like my second reread, right, was was there is a very distinctive cultural differences among the tribes and how they fight and the weapons that they have, um, and I thought that was a fascinating take on it. Not just because obviously metal. The metals development in North America was different, but also like in, in fantasy, it's the the trope of of this European concept of knights is so prevalent. But and and you see, but you see them everywhere. You see the battle armor, but everything in Mezzo looks different, right? Like it, it's it's a completely different feel. And so I wanted to kind of check out these things that they're doing and saying, okay, so. How can we do that in a completely different setting in this world with the history that we've already established and that we are going to establish? What what can we do with these things and how can we make them our own and give them distinct and make them unique? Um, that was something that I was really more obsessive with when I was sitting down to write or plotting out what what anything I wanted to do in the future and the characters and where I wanted them to go um, was, was kind of my big obsession with coming into it. Right. Is um or is is um is Val still on uh Val still on uh 
art duties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it like working with uh, Val, Jared? So I, I, I actually uh, didn't get to work with Val directly um, okay. because of the the time. Really, like, I, I mean, we were uh, we were we were getting it all together. Um, to, Val was already drawing, um, as a matter of fact, uh, but but only like the first issue, I think. But um, I'm I got to change scripts, and I'm really excited to see things that. <laughs> I, that I got to write in that Val now has to draw and, and things like that. Um, I, I've been a fan of Val since he did a book with Vault uh, called Deep Roots. Yeah, uh, Deep Roots is great. I, yeah, and I was a fan of Val, and I was like, man, one day, you know, I'll try and get him on something. I think I actually tried to get Val. I'm not positive if I actually reached out or if I just had him on a list, but he was actually one of the people I was going to talk to you about uh, doing a Twin Blades cover. Um, for Blood and Obsidian, um, and, and and obviously that never materialized. So it's been cool knowing that he's. I'm gonna see what he's drawn and things like that. But but yeah, he's a uh, he's still he's he, he's he's great. I love Val so much. I love Val's art so much. Well, with that, like, how, how did the like the writing process work then? Like Tyler, were you know, um, were you handling like some of the story? Did you have an idea how you wanted it to go? And Jared came into script. Like, how did that interplay work in terms of the two of you? Yeah, well, you know, I had started it like two years ago, um, was having a really hard time figuring out. Like, I had set it up and I knew what I wanted to do, had an yeah. idea. Yeah, volume but, um, two says Mezzo volume three in 2023. And I, 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 I wait. <laughs> <laughs> Learn the lesson. Don't never do that. Never, never <laughs> say, um, <laughs> that it's coming out in, in, in the year. And because we ended up skipping a year. Because we did when when I put out the trade, we had started like broken ground, so to speak. Right. Um but I was just like deliberating and, oh, I don't know. And I didn't want him to draw something and then change my mind. And he was like having a tough time waiting. And then a natural order came up. He's like, I got this job. You know, I can do both or whatever. I was like, no, just just go do a natural order. Like, that's a great thing. I didn't even know how hard they were going to push it, which they ended up doing a great job promoting that title but i was just like no just get it done just just focus on that i'm gonna sit here and so i sat there and with my editor joe uh, michael um Mos mosio is that his? <laughs> i don't know he's my editor i, I, I only see it in text i don't want to write it out um michael mosio <laughs> yeah i'm driving him crazy because i kept changing things and i'm just like man i don't and then i'm also like running a publishing company and and trying to make other things and um I was just like, yeah, I, I need, and at the same time, I've been getting to know Jared, like reading his his comics, Twin Blades, and how much he loves Mexican with swords. But but even, <laughs> even outside of that, like South, uh, Southbound, um, and all the devils are here. You know, just just like, you know, really liked. I think what he was saying exactly what I don't do as well. You know, which is like the really like character, emotional arcs, and the energy, and the sharp dialogue, and everything that I struggle with because i'm all like threads in my head and trying to do backstories and how do they intertwine kind of like thing but um that can sometimes create a failure to launch so anyway that's a long uh, way of saying that um i did bring him in sort of after we had broken ground but in like a nice break period so he got to read the scripts that i had written and in the first issue i was like basically like well that's you can change the dialogue but it's already drawn but everything else you can start working in and so yeah he did some redrafts most of the stuff i was cool with some things i'd be like eh, i don't know if that quite aligns with where i see these characters going um you know and, and we you know it's a process because i mean the only person i've co-written before was my wife um and then jared you were saying you hadn't done co-writing yet so yeah, yeah we're, you know we're we're learning and uh, figuring out how to complement each other. But I, as Jared said, I think it's a great fit with our writing styles. Really, our strengths are in different areas, so it's just about bringing them together perfectly. So, yeah, I'm excited to see with this because, like you just said, Tyler, uh, in terms of all those threads coming together, like the the groundwork that is laid in Volume One, and I and I, you know, I said the characters come together in Volume Two in such like interesting ways when you start to see how all these different characters are connected in volume two, 
so I'm really curious as to to be able to see that and like those connections, but then combined with, you know, with with Jared's writing. And one of the things I think that that you know, Jared, that you do exceptionally well in in comics right now is working with collaborators and in terms of your dialogue, I feel like you do a lot um, in terms of uh, kind of characters, inner workings or emotionality with like very little dialogue. I mean, you kind of like it, whether or not it's um, drama, something that's more dramatic, something that's like the characters in dry foot and like what they're going through or even in terms of humor with, you know, like crash and Troy and, and their relationship. Like, I, I don't feel like you have like, you know, your, your dialogue isn't, isn't burdensome and you can convey a lot with it. So I'm, I'm very curious to see how those two things combine in a comic that I really have loved the first two volumes. So that's just one more reason that I'm very excited about it. I, I, so like I keep saying, right. I was, I was psyched when I saw what everything was going on with volume three, right? Like, I, volume three was good before, like, like uh, we, you know, I think Tyler and I are really figuring out mostly like the ending sequence at this point. Right. But I, I loved all the book. I, I like where it's going. I like the direction that it was heading in before I came in. So it's really just been really fun for me to be kind of like, see what, what we can do and what, what buttons we can push and everything. Um, but yeah, and I, and, and dialogue, I, I love writing dialogue. Um, I think that I, I really do appreciate that as a compliment because uh, that is something that I personally think that I'm good at. I think that I'm, 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 I think that I'm good at conveying emotion in a way that isn't like beating somebody over the head with it, unless I want to, you know, and then I want you to feel like, like garbage, you know, um, <laughs> and, and like dry foot issue number three. Uh, so like that, whenever I, that's when I want to punch it through. So um, it's been fun. Like, <sighs> there's a, there's a sequence of, with two characters that I can't tell you which one, but that was the one that I kind of like went back and forth on the most. Um, it's, it's between a husband and wife and I'll leave it there. And okay. I, I was like going back and forth on that one because I was like, okay, like how would, how does this person do we know? Well, how much do we know about her and, and this, this and establishing and like, cause I wanted it to be like this really sincere, moment because i've been in in the scenario that it is i've been there like i know what that that situation is like i know how how tense and, and terrifying it is uh to see somebody you care about in, in a certain situation so um that was like something that i took really seriously and but that's what's so cool right because that was that 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 was already there i i just got to come in and play with the, t the emotional drama and everything between these two characters a little bit more, but this, this sequence that was already there, that would, that all I got to do is just, you know, sneak in and, uh, and, and tense it up. So like, I, I'm really excited for people that are already fans of the book to, to see what I, I brought in uh, alongside Tyler. Cause I, I think Tyler had great things in there and uh, getting to go in there from time to time. Right. And, and just tweak it a little bit or, or, or tweak it a lot of it that just so happened to work out between the two of us. Like the, it was really, it's really cool. It's been, a, it's been a cool experience. And, and I do think that I'm like an, I think I'm a fairly easy collaborator. Like I I'm something of a, of a, of a, like a, a cultural anarchist, right? Like, I, I, I'm not really attached to a lot of things, you know, um, I get really, the things that I get super into obsessively doing that that's one thing, but that's like 1% of things and 99% of things. I'm like, okay. You know, like as long as there's that, like, I, I trust Tyler. I trust that Tyler wants to make this as good as he possibly can. I want to do the exact same thing. So if, if you're telling me that you in the same thing with, with like, if I've had artists who are like, I think this might suck. I'm like, okay, well, let's figure out what, how to like not make it that way. Like, let's figure out how to do this the best possible way. Uh, because that's ultimately what I want for the book. Uh, and that's ultimately what I want for the characters. I'm so invested in them. Like, I love them so much that I want to tell the story well for them, even though, you know, some people will have broken hearts. Oh, no. Um, don't tell me that. 
All right, let's take a quick break. Hey, comics fam. Indie comic book publisher Band of Bars just got a level up and announced it is now a cooperative. This heralds a new era for them, including a partnership with Dauntless Stories. And they added several new members to the ownership group. Marcus Jimenez is now Chief Operating Officer, Brent Fisher takes on the role of Chief Diversity Officer, and Joey Galvez is introduced as Head of Kickstarter Ops and Social Media Manager, which is sure to increase their capabilities overall as a publisher, and it further promotes their mission statement of advancing representation, inclusion, and diversity in the media. They also established a new board of directors to help chart the new path of their journey. With new projects in the works like Alas Goodbye dropping in June, Unbroken soon launching on Kickstarter, and Pond coming up with Dauntless, stay tuned to this space for more exciting news from the growing Bards family. Let's get back to the show. Jared, you, uh, you know, I've seen before, it, whether or not it's your newsletter uh, or, you know, like on c- social media talking about the importance of representation and that. I think you said something before, and I'm probably paraphrasing this maybe poorly, but, um, you know, you, you, you don't want to write characters of, uh, you know, me- that are Mexican or of Mexican descent that are kind of like the same type of stereotypes. So even though this is like a fantasy world, it's kind of influenced by Mayan and, you know, Aztec mythology, you know, it's Mesoamerican. Um, was that like a kind of like, not only was volume one and two a, a like, you know, we, we've said a great story, but was that kind of like an, an, a, an additional um, bonus in terms of being able to write these characters that at least kind of embody that history a little bit or, you know, culturally? Yeah, I mean, you, you can you could get me anywhere if you if you offer me a Mexican with a sword, you know, like <laughs> like pretty much right. Like but but. I, I, I have an issue writing characters that match the same stereotype um, that, that like, right. And I'll say it because it, I'm the one that says it anyway, it's immigrants and cartels. Right. Um, I don't have any issue with either. I think both stories should exist, but when it's the only thing publishing offers, I start to feel a little bit uneasy <laughs> about that. You know, like we should really diversify it and, and write And, and so whatever diversify what we're doing and representing to people, so doing something like Mezzo is really cool because it is wildly, it, it's diverse in that everybody comes from the same region or is inspired by the same region that I myself come from. <laughs> like, so uh, maybe a little bit further, I'm, I'm actually probably too far North to, to come from it, but um, I, I deal with the sun all the same. So, uh, cause it's so hot all the time, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things where I was, I was, you probably let me like I, I you I wouldn't have written a normal fantasy story, right? If somebody had been like, "Hey, do you want to hop on the story with knights and orcs and wizards?" I'd be like, "No, I'm 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 cool." Um, so getting to see this this whole thing and getting to see how how lovingly it was done, um, and respectfully it was done, where I was like, "Hell yeah!" Like hell yeah, I want to get in on this. Like that's that's a. Uh, that that was exactly where it came from, right? Like I, I was like, this is already being, this has been done well. This has been done respectfully. You can tell Tyler's probably looked at enough pages of the Borgia Codex to draw drive himself insane. Um, and and so I was like, yeah, no, like that 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 was definitely one of the reasons that I, that I wanted to do Mezzo was was the strength of these characters and. Uh, their desires and and the 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 I'm I'm also not a big fan of the the normal moral black and white. I'm I'm a, I'm a much more of a bigger fan of characters that exist in that gray. And there's so much of that, right? Like you can kind of get behind what everybody's saying. <laughs> um, maybe not Fagor, you know. Yeah, you know uh, what? I, I not to cut you off, but I was just going to say I thought the same thing in the beginning with Fagor, but like. There, there's a scene, in, for I don't want to spoil everything, you know, I know we talked a lot about it for Volume 2, but if anyone hasn't read it and wants to pick it up, but there's a scene in Volume 2, kind of like uh, the the a part of like the climax with Fagor's character, and he's kind of like explaining his like main motivation, and I'm like, I kind of get it. Like, I, I mean, I get why he is hell-bent on revenge, you know? He feels like his, yeah. his people were totally abandoned, and he suffered because of it. Everyone he loves suffered. And I'm like, 
shit. <laughs> well, right. I love. I'm going to say right now, I am like Fagor's biggest fan. I think Fagor, <laughs> Fagor is easily my favorite. Right, but the other thing, the uh, the the other beautiful part of Fagor is that he was he's he was the son of a scientist, um, who, and he was blinded during the solar eclipse. So Fagor is one of the only characters in this entire book who who sincerely lost more than just family members on the day of the rupture. Yeah. Fagor has sacrificed a lot. And he has sacrificed a lot because he literally dared to stare into the face of God, you know, the sun, whatever, and he and it was taken from him. Fagor is a is is one of the the characters who's a real true believer in what he is saying and his religious affiliations with with Va and um and cool and and I just like it's it's so hard to to kind of think that Fagor Fagor is a good villain, but he's a good villain because you almost feel bad for him, and and there's like it's such a heartbreaking thing, but but that's heartbreak is what makes the worst of us, you know. Ah, I I fucking love Fagor. I like I am so into Fagor. Um, Ah, uh, yeah. I, I think he's a great. I think he's a great character, and he's and he's a bad guy. That's that's the uh, moral black and white. You're talking about someone who is who is distinctly a bad guy with no mercy for people like that. That and I and you feel bad for him. You feel something for him. That rules. That's awesome. It's the yeah. shit. Well done, yeah. Tyler. Thank you. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say you know I mean, my inspiration. I don't know how much you picked it up, but one of the things I was really channeling there was. Was I thought the the sort of a redo off of the Darth Vader Anakin storyline, you know? Because I was so frustrated oh. how that was handled in the prequels, which were mm-hmm. terrible. Um, that <laughs> I, just, I just view it as my version of telling the Anakin to Darth to Darth Vader story. Oh, I dig that. Yeah. I, I was picking up on like like Superman uh, Red Sun vibes because his father was a scientist and was trying mm. to warn everybody else and you yeah. know but oh my god I, I like the the part with his father was like one of the most heart-wrenching parts because you can you can tell like like this really sucks that F- Fagor became this way out of no actions really of his own like he's a he's a and 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 uh, yeah even in, vol- in volume two during what during the game you see he's just a kid you know um yeah, but man, that's- one of the things I, I mean, you know, we, we haven't talked too much about like story specifics, um, but one of the things I really loved about the flashbacks into not that it wasn't like exposition heavy and you got, to, you know, to, to get some of the character motivations. Um, but I, you also got a real sense in, in terms of when something terrible happens, when there is some type of like cataclysm, some type of tragedy, um, how, you know, easily like children can be influenced by not having a full understanding of what's going on when you, because all the, the, the kids that we see in the flashbacks who are the main characters, when we go back to present day, they've all been one way or another kind of <laughs> influenced. And we can talk about the moral gray of it rightly or wrongly by the, the adults and how they reacted to the situation around them. And we see how differently you know, each of them kind of developed with Fagor and Rodin going one way with the twins kind of abandoning, um, you know, their 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 people and kind of doing their own thing. Um, and, you know, we all kind you, you kind of see how like all of that has really affected them and just these little glimpses. But you can understand how it is kind of carried through in the years since the rupture. I think it's great. It's fantastic storytelling. I, I literally almost spoiled volume three because I kind of forgot what 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 I kind of got overlap. I literally almost <laughs> dropped like a massive spoiler. So I'm glad I didn't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I and, and I think I, I, again, like I'll, I'll shut up and let and let Tyler t- after I, after I say this, right? Like it's the it's the way that the flashbacks parallel the the main storyline that you you uncover so much as so much happens. Um, and that's been really interesting to, to work on with volume three is, is seeing 
learning. I, I, I was kind of learning what was happening to them too. And I was like, Oh shit, you know, and, and adjusting things based on that. But I, I love that. I, I also am a big fan of the flashback and parallels. Yeah. yeah totally. oh, go ahead. And feel <laughs> <free to talk. laughs> no, no, I was just going to say Tyler. I, I just, I, yeah, I, I, I hope that came there. off well. Um, Cause I, I landed into something in the, in the second volume where like we started every issue with a flashback, you get five, six pages of flashback, and then there's a transition into the character, the same character we were focusing on in the flashback. Now you start seeing the modern day world through that character's eyes. And uh, I was hoping people would dig it and that they could, you know, learn about both, you know, at the same time. And it's where you didn't get a big dump of flashback and now you know everything. But as these character, you know, arcs become important in the modern timeline, including knowing the history of Rodin and the twins and things like that. It's like, oh, you get to see it. You get to see them as kids, a little snapshot of that. So it makes more sense, you know, hopefully has more emotional resonance uh, when you see it play out in the current timeline. Oh, yeah, uh, I I can't wait. Uh, Jared, I wanted to ask you, and you something you touched on er- earlier about like your first time kind of coming into something that it not only was a series that had like 10 issues already, uh, but some of the issues for volume three had already, you know, kind of been drawn. Um, what do you think was the biggest challenge in terms of doing something like that as opposed to building a series from the ground up? Were there unique challenges to doing that as a, you know, that you found as a writer? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, first and foremost, right? Like, it, there, it is a, it's a collaboration at the writing stage, which is already something that's su- super different from, from what I normally do, right? Because it's the first time e- ever. But it, it, not in terms of like the actual technical work of of going and looking through the scripts and and figuring things out there. I, I really didn't feel like I had a, a a ton of difficulty with any of that really at all. Um, I felt like. Like I think my biggest thing is is when coming into a project is how much do you know about the character? Um, because th- if you don't know everything about that, you really can't tell a story. And so when I ever, whenever I came into the writing, the technical aspects, um, exploring the, the the character arcs and things like that, I felt like I knew the characters pretty well, um, and that helped me kind of hit the ground running with it uh is is that there was so there was groundwork laid there was a re- a reasonable amount of groundwork made right nobody was like hey read 50 years of comics um cuz i would have been like i i no i don't have time <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and, so like there's not that it, it was it was pretty straightforward uh and like and the characters are like a, like we keep saying like are, are really fantastic so it was uh it was that that part i did not really feel like i had any typical time with at all because i i knew the characters so well okay yeah, i was just curious uh you know because i'm always uh, I, whenever i you know in, whenever I, because we do mostly you know indie comics and I, I mean I read a lot of all kinds of different comics and um you know whenever folks are especially on Twitter someone will say like you know what what other IP do you have a, like a dream to write for and like everyone throws out there I have a story and I want to do this and I'm always just like I don't I don't know how folks do that aspect of it like I have stories I want to tell and characters I I want to write but like. I, I seriously, I could not think of a single Batman story <laughs> to tell. And uh, I, I'm, I'm always so impressed when folks can like jump into anything else that somebody has kind of already had a history with and told some type of story. Um, I always feel like that presents like more unique challenges than building something from the ground up. Uh, you know, something like this, though, I understand your point that, you know, you didn't have to read 50 years of, of continuity to kind of get into it, which I'm sure was, you know, kind of helpful to get into who these characters are. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't harbor any secret ambitions to write, write Batman one day or anything. <laughs> when, when did the, we as the general public start saying IP to talk about things we like? I don't like, know. <laughs> why what what happened where we have to talk i have to talk like a hollywood exec to be like yo you get to see star wars you know like yeah shit. i blame 
I think Entourage started it, <laughs> and then <laughs> I, I'll blame I'll blame the TV show Entourage. I think that was the <laughs> that, that began the downward trajectory. Um, but in any event, um, so Tyler, I wanted to ask you. Uh, so we know Mezzo Volume Three, The Trial of Rodin out may 1st uh what else can we look forward to this year from uh a wave blue world is there anything else at, right now you can talk about um for this year no i think i think you, you've got oh actually it hasn't come out yet sorry um but um yeah we have becoming who we are uh real stories about growing up trans is coming out on may 22nd awesome. so yeah that, that that's coming out it's funny in my head i've been working on that last two years so it's like Old news. It's like, oh no, wait, it hasn't come out yet. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's coming, coming out in in May, and then yeah, we're going to do the five issue run, which I'm super excited to do issues. It's fun. I, I like to do issues. I like things that come out um, that way. So it is fun to have at least one series where I'm still doing the individual issues um, with the trade paperback at the end of the year, um, and that's going to close out my. Um, 2023 we are going to do a kickstarter in june for our anthology for next year so you can look out for that i won't announce it yet but you'll know okay. um, fairly soon and then awesome. yeah i'd like to do a volume four i'd like to do a sequel to my uh orphan king ya series so i'm working on that right now um so yeah i've got a lot of things in the fire we're gonna keep we're never gonna be a big company like that's not my goal but we're gonna keep some good things coming out awesome Oh, well, happy to hear it. And Jared, how about you? Um, uh, is there anything else that you can talk about? I, I know that sometimes the timing of things, you're always not able to say what the, the next thing you might be working on is. And that's that's fine. We understand that here at the Cryptid Creator Corner. So uh, I have a book called, uh, well, so I have Mezzo all year. Um, and then I have Night from Hell coming out. Um, I don't know when in the summer because it is a hashtag La Raza summer. Okay. Mezzo night from hell back to back in the same summer. Um, so that's going to come out from BOB and dotless, uh, sometime this summer. Uh, I, I know it's coming out in preview soon. Um, so whatever that would be. And then, uh, I have a, I'm going, I'm actually pitching a book to, to Tyler in probably a month or so. Um, for uh, a black and white book that I've had sitting in my drafts folder for a long time. Uh, I'm going to get an artist to start working on it. Uh, so we'll have some pages and things going, but um, yeah. I, I, and then if that, if, if, if Tyler's like, no, I'm busy, I'm big time, you know, uh, which is fine. Or, or, or he hates it and thinks it sucks, which is also fine. Um, I'm, I'm going to take that to, uh, I'm probably going to take that to Kickstarter. Um, at the towards the end of the year, depending on when we get started with art, uh, and then after that, uh, Southbound number two will be hitting Kickstarter, hopefully early 2025. But uh, unfortunately, Emiliano and I have not been able to link up on a schedule yet, so uh, we we have not been able to start art. Uh, it was my fault. I took a break towards the end of last year, and I didn't do a script when I was supposed to. So, uh, but we're going to get linked up on that, and so so yeah, we there should be. A, a lot of happenings in the next f over the course of the next like eight months, I think. Awesome. Yeah. I, I just recently, you know, read my copy of uh Southbound number one and uh, yeah, loved it. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Story. Thank you. Can't wait to see where, where number two goes. Yeah, listeners, if, if you're, you know, if you didn't hear me talk about that or, um, you know, on social media or where if I haven't mentioned it before, but yeah, Southbound number one was great. Kind of like a, uh, and that what a, a yeah. assassin for hire cyberpunk set in the future Dallas. Um, yeah, really cyberpunk Dallas, Texas, baby. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun just to say what a, what a fun pitch that is. That pitch got rejected just by, by a lot of people. And I'm like, that is the coolest sentence of all time. Cyberpunk Dallas assassin. You know, that that's it. That's all I want. Yeah, Mexican. I, I, I I'm sorry. Was great. Love the character design for that one. Um, and I can't wait. I think I have the cover where there's a chainsaw man on the front, like a guy with a chainsaw. And I can't wait. I don't I think we only got like a little taste of those in issue one, like just a mention. So I'm super excited because those those dudes, they don't 
they look like they got some stuff going on. So I want to. Oh, <laughs> you will love you will love issue number two. Then. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I mean, uh, Tyler, Jared, th- this has been fantastic. I- I'm just so excited to talk about this. I, uh, I, if nothing else, this episode gave me an excuse to read volumes one and two again. And I'm, I'm just like enthused. Like it's one of those comics that I read and I'm like, yeah, I, this, this is why I, I first started a few years ago to think maybe I could write like a comic, like something like this that just makes somebody feel something or escape or just, you know, look at this, the, the artwork and say like, this is just, it's just fun. It's uh, I just love it. So I'm so excited for May 1st. For Mezzo Volume Three: The Trial of Rodin, I cannot wait for that first issue. I am just super excited. Val is a phenomenal artist, and uh, really like the creative team. Excited to see uh, kind of Jared's influence on it, and um, yeah, Tyler. It's it's you know it's it's a phenomenal series. So uh, yeah, yeah. so so glad you guys are are here talking with me tonight. Yeah, here, can I show you something? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Where are you, Wolf? <laughs> yeah. I love that cover. Yeah, listeners, yeah. I know that you, you can't see, but it, this cover that is just phenomenal. Yeah, we we didn't even talk about how good the covers are for this series. You know, like you Maria that. Wolf, Chris Sheehan. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know <sighs> that's true. We didn't. Some of the covers are phenomenal. Uh, yeah, Maria, yeah. Wolf, uh, Maria Wolf's work is just incredible, and uh, yeah, I, I'm a big Chris Sheehan fan. They do mm-hmm. phenomenal work. So. Yeah, I think his, I, no, his number three is my favorite. Can't wait to put that out there. He did a, a badass number three. <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah. So, is yeah, that, I don't have too many variants, but, you know, when you can get awesome artists to do their vision of the characters, it's yeah. hard to turn down. <laughs> is, is Thomas Mauer still lettering? Oh, t- Thomas, so Thomas. So I found out what, what happened to Thomas. Um, he uh, he broke his thumb. Um Oh no! And he wasn't able to letter it, and he's also he's teaching now, and so he was going to do it over his break, and then I guess he broke his thumb over break, and so we're having Pete Carlson, who does who's the art director at Away Blue World, and, uh, doing the production design. He's lettering it now too. So oh okay, great. awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I I cannot wait. I'm so excited for this, listeners. Make sure you tell your your uh, your LCS or wherever you get your comics. Uh, pre-ordering it, adding it to your pull list. It not only helps the shop, it'll help you because you'll make sure to get it. And it helps the creative team as well to let them know that people are interested in this. And and if you haven't yet, please go read Mezzo Volume 1 and 2. You will not be disappointed. It is just an amazing, amazing series. And you'll get all caught up. And look, we all have a to-be-read pile. So by the once you start getting issues 1, by the time you get through Volumes 1 and 2, You'll probably have issue one, two, maybe even three ready for you to go. (laughs) So (laughs) it won't be as much of a delay. Um, But yeah, Tyler, Jared, um, so great that I I got to meet, you know, see you both in person before at Baltimore Comic Con. I'm a big fan of Baltimore. And uh, yeah, Jared, it was great meeting you in person. You know, uh, you were there for Crash and Troy, another phenomenal series, getting nominated for a Ringo. And um, I just, I really appreciate you both talking with me tonight. Please, you know, come back anytime. Um, this was quite a thrill for this old man. <laughs> this was a blast. <laughs> All right. Listen, uh, oh, I almost forgot. Shout out to my brother, Bobby, the Cryptic Creator Corners, number one, most dedicated fan. Bobby listens to all my episodes and he buys a lot of comics. And, um, yeah. And he tells me, he, I know if he likes an episode, cause he'll just text me and he'll go, can you put this on? Can you add this to my pull list? Cause, uh, so I always shout out to him on the episodes. But listeners, I really appreciate you listening. Let us know if you like the episode. Let us know if you like the comics. Please, anytime, find me on on Twitter and let's talk about comics. Uh, Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Have a good night and I will see you next time. Jared, you have something else before we go? Bobby, pre-order Mezzo. (laughs) Tell your shop, buddy. You'll like it. I promise. (laughs) I'm going to get a text now. I just know it. All right. Thanks a lot. Good night, everybody. This is Byron O'Neill, one of your hosts of the Cryptid Creator Corner, brought to you by Comic Book Yeti. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of our podcast. Please rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. It lets us know how we're doing, and more importantly, how we can improve. Thanks for listening. 
If you enjoyed this episode of the Cryptid Creator Corner, maybe you would enjoy our sister podcast, Into the Comics Cave. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.